Since the dawn of time, mankind has aspired to one unattainable dream above all others. To play the tennis racket as a guitar. But success in this endeavor has been elusive. Many calling it a fool's dream or insisting the tennis racket is really nothing more than sporting equipment. Today, all that's about to change because in this video, we're about to show you how to turn your very own tennis racket into an electric three string slide guitar. To help make building your own three-string tennis guitar easy and fun, we've created a PDF workbook that includes a parts list and cutout templates to take the guesswork out of cutting and drilling. You can download the workbook at tennis-racket-guitar.com. That's tennis-racket-guitar.com. It's 100% free and no registration is required. Just download the PDF. While all the materials you'll need, as well as good places to find them, are included in the workbook, here's a quick rundown. A tennis racket. 1 inch by 1 half inch pine board. 1 inch by 3 quarter inch pine board. 3 16 inch thick plywood. Aluminium flat bar. 14 gauge Heiko bar. A quarter inch aluminium rod. Some electronics parts, including a pickup, phone plug, and potentiometer. Be sure to pick a potentiometer that comes with a knob to your liking, masking tape, glue, zip cord, tuning machines, heat shrink tubing, and various nuts and bolts listed in your workbook. A quick word on choosing a racket. Music for this video was recorded with a much stiffer racket than the one seen throughout most of the video. While using your tennis racket guitar for recording or live performance is not recommended, Playability will be enhanced by choosing the sturdiest racket you can find. Let's get started with the bridge section. Grab your 1 by one half inch pine board and cut two 10 inch sections. Stack the sections, making sure the ends align then tape them together with masking tape. Print out your PDF workbook and cut out the patterns B1 and B2. Tape B1 to the two 10 inch wood sections. Following the pattern, cut the corners off both pieces. It may be helpful to know the corners are cut at 35 degree angles. Now drill the two larger holes as indicated by the pattern. The smaller holes should go all the way through one of the pieces, but only part way through the other. We used a drill guide with a depth stop and a 1 8 inch thick piece of scrap wood. Separate the pieces and label the bottom one with the partial holes B1. You can label the other piece B2 while you're at it, but you don't really need to. Orient B1 so the partial holes face downward. Attach pattern B2 to the long side closer to the partial holes and such that the triangle on the label points up. Drill the additional holes all the way through in accordance with the pattern. Now we're going to add two sliding pins that will be the contact points with your racket. Cut two two inch long sections from your aluminium rod using a hacksaw. Pound them into the two smaller holes on part B1. Then pull them out. This should loosen up the holes and make gluing the pins a little easier. For glue, we're using JB Weld, but any adhesive recommended for bonding aluminium to wood will work.
Once the glue is dry, slide part B2 in place over the pins. This may take a little force. Now we're ready to finish assembling the bridge piece. You'll need your two large 5 sixteenths of an inch bolts, three number 12 bolts, two wing nuts, three regular nuts, and two corner braces. Assemble as shown, and your bridge section is complete. Now let's work on the headstock and nut. Cut your remaining one and a half by one half hobby board into three sections, measuring five and one quarter inches, three and a half inches, and two inches. Label them H1, H2, and H3 respectively. Now grab a sheet of your 3 16 inch plywood. Use part H1 as a pattern to cut a matching section of the board and glue it on. This is to add thickness so your tuning machines will fit properly once the project is complete. Once the glue is dried, cut out pattern H1. Tape it to part H1 and drill according to the pattern. Now do the same with pattern H2 and part H2. For the next part, you're going to need thicker 1 inch by 3 quarter inch pine board. Cut off a 2 inch section and attach pattern H4. Drill in accordance with the pattern. Next, cut off the end so it roughly bisects the hole. Label this part H4. Now that you've cut and drilled all the pieces, it's time to assemble them as shown. Make sure to place H2 such that the drill hole is to the left. Glue it all together and your headstock is complete. Now it's time to assemble the electronics. Grab your aluminium flat bar and cut a four and a half inch section. Attach pattern E1 and drill in accordance with the pattern. Now cut a four and a half inch section of heat shrink tubing. Use the holes you drilled in your aluminium strip to mark corresponding spots on the tubing. Next, using some scrap wood placed inside the tubing, cut the holes in the places you marked. The holes don't have to be round, but should be about the same size. Put the heat shrink tubing aside. Now you're going to need your quarter inch input jack and potentiometer. Insert the threaded sleeves of each part through the holes in the aluminium strip and fix them in place with the hex nuts that should have come with the parts.
Don't screw them on too tight since you'll need to remove them later. If soldering wire and electronics is new to you, this might be a good time to look up some pointers or get someone who knows their way around a soldering iron to help out. Whatever the case, follow this diagram. Once this is complete, remove your now wired components from the aluminium piece and slide them inside the heat shrink tube so the threaded sleeves poke out through the holes. Reattach the aluminium section on the outside of the tube. Once more, don't tighten the hex nuts too much because you'll be taking them off one more time. Plug a guitar cord into the quarter inch plug. This will keep the heat shrink from encroaching on the space it will need to work properly. Use a heat gun or any substitute that may be available to make the heat shrink do its thing. Make sure you're happy with the result because additional use of the heat gun once the electronics are attached to the racket will likely pop the strings. Here's what your assembled electronics should look like. Grab your piece of Heiko bar. You're going to cut it into four sections. Two with ten holes and two with three holes. You don't want excessive metal sticking out past the holes when your racket guitar is assembled, so make two cuts for each separation as you see here. When you're done, it should look like this. Grab your now glued and dried headstock. Bolt the two longer pieces of Heiko bar to the hole you drilled in H3 so they can swing freely. Time to grab your racket. Hold the headstock to the neck of your racket such that H4 is flat against the butt. That's where the logo is. Rotate one of the high bars so the anchored end aligns with the middle of the grip. Keeping it in this position, look for the hole in the high bar that is the farthest from the anchored one but still shows wood underneath. Mark this spot. Remove the high bar sections and drill a 3 16th of an inch hole where you marked the headstock. Rebolt the Heiko bars using the old hole, but this time including the short sections on the outside of the long ones. Use a second bolt to attach the long sections at the new hole. Run a third bolt through holes at the end of the short sections. It's time to install the tuning machines. They'll come with their own directions, but the general idea is to slide them into the appropriate holes on the headstock.
Now let's attach the headstock to your racket. Run a zip cord through the two outside holes of the Heiko bars, then place your racket between the bars. Work the pieces so the butt of your racket is tight against H4, then tighten the zip cord. There'll be some movement, but things will tighten up once you put on the strings. Slide the racket between your two bridge pieces and tighten them with the wing nuts. Remove the flat brass colored metal strip from the back of your pickup by unscrewing the two tiny nuts holding it in place. Slide the pickup between strings and locate it in the desired spot. This could be about two inches forward of the bridge or even more if you prefer a darker tone. Reattach the pickup to the metal strip, but now on opposite sides of the racket face. If the strings on your racket are too thick, getting those tiny nuts back on could be a bit of a task. Remember, you can always get creative if this method of attaching the pickup isn't working out. Now for the last time, separate your electronics from the aluminium strip. Place the electronics on the back side of the racket face with the threaded sleeves poking through. But now on the front side of the face. You can screw them on as tight as you like this time because you won't need to take them off until your next tennis match. Now all that's left is to add the bolt that will serve as the nut and string your tennis guitar. Place the nut bolt in the carved out area atop H4. Run the strings through the three holes in the bridge, over the bridge bolt, down the length of the racket, over the nut bolt, under the next bolt and to the tuning machines. Congratulations, you've now transformed your tennis racket into an electric three-string slide guitar.